Welcome. Uh, for those of you who are joining me live and for those of you who are watching this recording, I can't wait to get started. And hi, Marilyn. Is that how you pronounce your name? Okay. Wonderful to have you. And uh, thanks all of you for joining. I'm really excited to get into today's topic and to let you know about what's going to be taking place over the next three weeks. As many of you already know, because you're in my Facebook group, I have a private community there. And over the next three weeks, I'm covering um, a really important topic of boundary setting. And I'll go into a little bit about what we'll be covering over the three weeks, but mainly today, you are joining to hear about the topic of reclaiming me time and unlocking your best self. So in order to reclaim me time, this whole three weeks is going to be focused on boundary setting and using boundaries to develop more self-acceptance and kindness towards yourself, as well as free up time for your health and activities that fill you with joy and open up opportunities for creativity and meaningful, purposeful work. So a little bit about myself before we get started. I'm glad and honored to say that over probably 12 years ago, I started my coaching practice and with two little kids in tow, I managed to start lifting this project off the ground of helping people who were in big professional roles, entre female entrepreneurs at the time, be able to make time for themselves like I was doing and make time for meaningful work without sacrificing their own health, without sacrificing their own happiness. And my goodness, it's been a journey. And <clears throat> last year I published my book, From Burnout to Bliss. I don't think I have a copy here. Um, yeah, I do. So this is the book that I published, From Burnout to Bliss. It's called The 21 Day Plan to Boost Health, Wealth, and Happiness. And that was a baby that was seven years inside me. It took seven years to get it out. And so if you are, if you have something big on your heart and you know that now is the time to start doing something about it and valuing your hours and your days that you have here on this earth, pay attention to that voice. So today I'm gonna to share with you a story, um, several stories actually, and I'm going to invite you to be interactive with me and engaging. <clears throat> if you're watching this on Facebook afterwards or you're getting it in your email, feel free to respond in those ways too in the comments or email me back. And if you're live, you have the opportunity to be able to pick my brain and engage as we go along together. So as we journey together forward in this community over the next three weeks, my ask is that you, if you're going to uh, be with us for the whole three week period, is that you in exchange for, um, you, you may not know this, Marilyn, but I have a boundary setting toolkit and it's something that I'm gifting you <clears throat> and for everyone else watching. So that the, those three weeks of time, as well as the boundary setting toolkit and the calls, the live calls, I'm asking for in return, help to build out a program that I'm creating and it's called Recalibrate and a testimonial over the time that we spend together of 
how the next three weeks impacts your life would be something that would be very valuable for me. So let's jump into today's training. Reclaiming me time and unlocking your best self. So when I, when I think about this topic, we're told so many stories, right? About what's okay and what's not okay and who we should be, who we should aspire to be, who we never should be. And that can easily subconsciously shape how we show up in the world. When I was raising our kids and they were young, <clears throat> I didn't wanna ask for help. And that's something that majorly held me back from making space for myself because it felt weak and I felt incompetent when I couldn't manage everything by myself. And yet one of the stories that society tells us is that it was just a confirmation of that, that if you can't manage everything yourself, then you're not strong, you're weak. And it's not looked on highly at all. It can be looked on with judgment. So maybe as I'm sharing some of the stories that I've heard, what you can do is you can add your own in the comments. So some stories that I've heard about that hold me back or have held me back from, from making time for myself is this whole sense that it's selfish. It's selfish to prioritize yourself when there's so many things that need your attention. You should be available to your spouse. You should be doing what everyone wants you to do. That's how you should be spending your time. You should be prioritizing other people's priorities. And we're not told that story directly, but it definitely can trickle down through society and unconsciously we can live out what we think, how we think we should live, right? So what are some other stories? To listen to your own desires is like egotistical. To maybe change makers, change makers don't do me time. Like if you're really up to something important in the world, you don't have time for that. It's not even, it's not even a thought because you have other people to think about. You should be thinking about other people more than yourself. Thinking about yourself first. There's something bad about that, which is why it makes a lot of people feel guilty. I've heard so many people tell me it makes them feel guilty. So that's something for other people who are easily satisfied and don't have big pursuits. That's what me, those people who take me time, they're just easily satisfied. They don't have big big aims in life. So you want to make a difference. You have to be other pe other focused. What are some stories that you've heard that would hold you back from reclaiming time for yourself so that you can be the woman you want to be? So you can be the person or the man or the leader you want to be. Another one that I've heard is fit in to be a success. That one definitely trickles down through our culture. Don't stand out. Don't be different. Go with the flow. You'll be accepted. You'll be a success, guaranteed. So when I had first started my work and I was starting to build awareness and create visibility and let people know how I could help, I thought definitely that I needed to fit in. And that stripped me of the self-awareness that was telling me I was giving too much. I was overextending myself, which made me overwhelmed, tired, stretched thin, less available for my family, not available for myself, and unhappy. If I was truly honest, you know, I was happy a lot of the time, but there was aspects of me that were just performing. And 
if I did, if I had listened more at that time to that knowing voice we all have inside ourselves, then I would have been able to create better, more flexibility in my schedule and my life so that I wasn't ignoring myself, you know? So any stories coming to mind for you <clears throat> that you think are holding you back personally, why don't you put them in the chat? Stories that hold me back or beliefs that hold me back from creating the time for myself to be or do what I want at, in this season of my life. While you do that, let's look at, let's look at what I started to believe that changed, changed my habits and behaviors and started to bring joy back into my life. Because I felt like, honestly, I felt like I was losing part of myself, like the true part of who I was. I wasn't honoring anymore and I wasn't being my real self because I was thinking the wrong way about a few important things that impacted my ability to honor myself and prioritize myself. So let's talk about the power of changing your story. Let's talk about what gave me motivation to make those changes. So if you're taking notes right now, what I'd like you to do is I'd, I'd like you to write down the word identity. We need to change our identity in order to change our reality and our habits. Because when we're thinking something different about ourself and about what reclaiming me time means, then our habits follow suit. It's like the thoughts are the bus driver and your emotions are the gas. So certain thoughts are gonna make you feel a certain way and that gas moves the bus forward. And every new step that you take is like a brick laid on the road in, ahead of you. So you're paving the path forward to a new destination. So the first part of re, uh, reframing your story is identity. So this is step number one. So I started realizing that I needed to think of myself as equally worthy and equally valuable. I needed to think that my happiness mattered too that my happiness was just as important as my spouse, as my children, as my clients, as my friends, because it can be very natural. We have an innate human need to be there for other people. And that's a good thing to help other people. But it's when things become out of balance, right? That we lose track of what's really important. And yes, I'm talking about your peace, your calmness, your happiness, your fulfillment. That is really important because if you don't show up with peace in your heart and an ability to stay calm when everything around you is shaking and you're not using your skills and your strengths that wanna be expressed because you're not making time for yourself, then really, are you being the mom or the spouse or the friend or the professional leader that you want to be? You can't be if you're not making time for yourself. So you need to change your identity. And I changed mine to those things that I was just mentioning, right? Um, I matter. I'm equally valuable. I'm an equal. 
my happiness matters. My happiness matters just as much as anyone else's. Um, I also started believing that it was responsible to take care of myself, that I was being irresponsible if I didn't. And that was a really helpful shift. Responsible people take care of themselves. Responsible people prioritize time for themselves. Responsible people are sometimes just being, they're not doing. Responsible people listen to their hearts or listen to that voice that speaks to your heart. I'm being thoughtful. So all of this is like reshaping my identity, right? And I still have to do this when I notice that my habits aren't aligning with something that I, I have a goal around and I'm getting frustrated because I'm not making progress. That's when I know that I need to change how I'm thinking and I have to re-engineer my thoughts, which is what we're doing right now. So someone who makes time for themselves is responsible, is thoughtful, is being thoughtful, not only towards self, but you're actually being thoughtful towards others because you know that they get a cranky you or an impatient you or an unpresent you. They do not get the best you if you're not prioritizing yourself. And the last thing that I reframed and changed about my identity was that I'm being a caring person when I make time for myself. And that it's the strongest thing that I could do is ask for help. That I'm worthy of support. When you're the one supporting everyone else, you better make sure that you are making time so that you can fill up and you can be supported, right? Otherwise, you're not going to be a sustainable person for anyone. So what's coming up for you? Do you want to share any insights that are popping for you? You can either unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat. Amy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can you um, hear me? I, I, yeah, I hear you. You hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm not super good in English, so I took everything and maybe I will have to do that uh, today, later or during the week until we met uh, for the other part. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> it's because I have to to yeah. take that and analyze everything so mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> well take your time um if yeah. there's some, don't feel like you need to rush in response no to, to what i'm sharing yeah. um, if there's something that comes up later today then yeah. i would love to hear what the insights are yeah <laughs> okay good thanks <laughs> all right so <clears throat> Let me share with you a story about my, how my motivation changed because sometimes my motivation so that I could make time for what fills me with joy and excitement and love and energy, the things that we get access to when we have alone time. So when I, it's probably like 2000, 14 or no 2016 in 2016 I started hearing this um and this is where somebody might think I'm crazy but that's okay because I know many people who hear voices <laughs> I started hearing this voice that said right 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 and I thought okay well I can write and so I started creating a blog and that voice that was telling me to write never quieted down. It just kept speaking to me and I thought, I am writing, okay, what else could I do? So pay attention to what, 
what is the voice telling you right now? And so I thought, okay, I'm already writing. I'm writing this blog. Um, maybe, like maybe a book. I did had no clue what the book would be about. But I'd always loved writing. I had written songs. I'd written poems. Um, a lot of my free time when I was a young girl, I would write little stories, short stories, and loved getting lost in another world. And <clears throat> so as soon as I had the idea, well, maybe I'm supposed to write a book, and I started writing the book, the voice stopped. And I never heard the voice anymore encourage me to write. And so I thought, okay, I'm on the right track. If I'm not hearing that incessant voice that keeps telling me to write, I'm on the right track. So I spent a number of years pursuing that writing. And in Canada, in Tofino, BC, in Hawaii, on Hornby Island, I wrote that book. And it felt really uncomfortable sometimes for me to tell my family that I wasn't available, I would be writing. And of course, I would have limits. I would have boundaries around my time and our boundaries need to be communicated, right? And we need to know why it's so important that we're spending our time doing something just for ourselves. Otherwise, we won't do it, right? If we're living by that old story of it's selfish for me to take this time to write or whatever you're dreaming of, it's selfish for me to take that time to do that just for me. But I knew that there was a bigger purpose associated with it. I could just feel it. And so I was willing to go against the grain of society that said, you're just being selfish. You're, you're not being, you should be doing blank. You should be available for your kids. You should be available for your husband. You should be available for your fam, your extended family. I was willing to say, no, for a small period of time, on a consistent basis, I will write. Because it felt like it was important enough that I should be like, almost like, I, I should say yes to the call. Because otherwise I was gonna keep hearing that voice <laughs> on a daily basis. So I wrote for a couple of years and then I nearly, um, yeah, I'm jumping ahead, I'm gonna come back. I. I, I finished the book eventually. Let's just say three years in, probably, I finished the book. And <clears throat> I struggled to be consistent, but I finished it. Then I let the book sit for about a year. And I, after that year was up, I just needed a break from it. I nearly thought, you know, maybe I can use a lot of the content in this book, but after reading it, I realized that I had to write the whole thing over because it had been a year and I had grown so much and I'd learned so much working with my clients privately, working with them in person, over the phone, working with groups, speaking professionally. I just grown so much in that year since the time I started the book and so I decided I was going to rewrite the whole thing which was quite a commitment and nearing the end of maybe the sixth or seventh year of me devoting a lot of me time to writing I realized not I realized I nearly let myself not publish the book because I was starting to believe some doubt in my mind that said, maybe people won't really benefit from the book, Amy. Maybe people won't really get value from the book. Maybe it wasn't worth writing. And oh my goodness, that self-doubt was so loud that it, it nearly, I nearly gave it the power, gave my power over to that doubt and nearly didn't publish the book but I was able to combat that self-doubt with, with confidence, with courage. So the reason that I tell that story is because 
like I said, there's absolutely no way that this book would be out in the world and future books will be out in the world unless I had listened to that voice and I had changed the story of what it means, like who I am when I take time for myself, that I'm not selfish, that I'm not ungrateful, that I'm not a bad person, that I'm not a bad wife or mom, you know, when I'm not available to other people. I had to change that story in order to give myself permission to honor my priorities and to listen to that voice. And that was crucial for me to be able to show up, change my routines, change my habits, get out of my comfort zone, like expand my comfort zone to include more joy and meaning in my life. But I had to give myself that permission to change my ways and to change my habits. So as you think about this for yourself, I want you to write down, um, the, the first word was identity. The second word I want you, to, second topic I want you to write down is my motivation, my motivation. <clears throat> so why am I going to reclaim time for myself? Is it to feel a certain way that you haven't felt in a long time? Is it to be filled with joy and energy again? Is it to do maybe accomplish something meaningful in this new season of your life? Is it to feel like you're really honoring your values and living in alignment? What is your motivation? Because your motivation needs to be strong enough to help you get uncomfortable. Do you want to write a book like I did? Do you want to be a part of leading a, a really purposeful project? and adding value to the world? Do you want to maybe be the one who breaks old, unhelpful, or hurtful family patterns, and you want to create a new family legacy, a new family story? Like maybe your mom or your parents never rested, and so they, they never never honored themselves and never prioritized their own dreams. And so you want to teach your community or your children or your, you know, your like your godchildren that it's good and important for us to listen to our dreams. So what's your motivation? Get clear on what your motivation is, what your driving force is, so that when any voices inside you tell you you're, you shouldn't be making time for yourself, you can say, no, this is why I'm doing it. Now you need to be quiet. So let's, let's write down a small shift you could make today. What's a small shift or a small change you could make today that wouldn't feel so overwhelming, that would feel doable? And what would you want to spend time on just for you? Something that is joyful, creative, or loving. It isn't on your to-do list. It isn't a task. It's not for someone else. Do you want to share one thing that you would like to start spending time on, Marilyn?
yes <clears throat> to find just my motivation <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um, i have time for that so i have to prioritize just one thing that's that's my goal right now yeah because yeah. i I'm not focusing just on one thing. I'm always like open and grab a lot of things. And it's funny, but sometimes we have to just arriving at one point and finish just this point. It will take one week, two weeks, a month, a year. But that's my, my motivation right now, I think, just mm -hmm. to focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. mm. And keep the other away and... yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so it sounds like having time for yourself will help you determine what's most important right now yeah yeah because when we're busy and we're feeling like we're pulled in a thousand different directions then we don't have the clarity to feel in our heart actually this is something that if I could focus on this and mm -hmm. finish this, it would be so important to me. Yeah. And instead of thinking that, well, if I don't do <clears throat> these three things or these five things, then, you yeah. know, I'll miss that opportunity, but that's never the case. We yeah. can only, we can only work on so many things at once. And that feeling of fulfillment really does take place when we're, when we finish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm like a sponge. So, and I like to, <laughs> to try a lot of things. So, so it's it nourish me and it's, it's fun. But when you want to accomplish something, we have to just arriving and that part, in I think for me it's the the difficult one to arriving at just to focus <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and if I was coaching you right now I would go deeper into why that's actually difficult to focus and just choose one there's probably something that you're telling yourself that um makes you not want to choose just one <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as we we get clear on what that is then you can easily choose one and feel good about it mm -hmm. thanks for sharing <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's your goal for this week for those of you who are watching is what would I spend time on just for me that would make me feel joyful creative and loving and for Marilene that is sounds like making time for herself so that she can decide what is that one thing for me right now. So she needs that time to get clarity, to get clear. And then what is the second question you ask yourself is what's that one small change I could make today or this week? So maybe it's instead of expecting too much of yourself, it's saying, I'm going to spend five minutes every day and I'm going to, or five minutes every day this week and I'm going to have silence or music on and, or go for a walk, however you wanna have that alone time so that you can listen to your heart, listen to what is being spoken by your heart because your heart is really your essence. And it knows what you need. And that silence and that time for you will give you the awareness so that you can listen. So make it easy for yourself. Maybe that one small change is just something you're going to do today or that you want to be able to talk about next week if you're going to attend the second class Wednesday at 5 p.m. Let me look at the date for that. I think it's... Um, yeah, it's the 26th of April at 5 p.m. So until then, this is your, your focus, is those last two questions. What would I spend time on and what small change could I make first? 
And then next Wednesday at 5 p.m. is our second call. And the topic is how to break the rules. And I'm gonna teach you some effective boundary setting skills so that, excuse me, you can use your time effectively and wisely and you can bring more peace and joy and accomplishment into your life. And you can take more meaningful risks so that your comfort zone expands and you're creating meaning and purpose in the world and you're filled up so that you can always give out. So any questions after what I've shared with you today? This is now, this is the time to ask them and I'm open to anything. And if not, that's fine too. Okay. Thank you everyone for taking your time and joining live or watching afterwards. And I'm so excited to jump in and teach you all about boundaries, how to set them, when to know you need them, how to communicate them so that you can leave the legacy you want with your life. You can feel deeply connected with the people that you love. You can have the health that you want and you can make the professional impact and income that you want. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the Facebook group and I'll see you next week on the call. Take care. Bye Amy, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.